Good afternoon. I'm Tom Butcher of the Essel Foundation, and I am here this afternoon with Shane Kennedy, who is actually virtual. Um, Shane is with G3 ICT, and we're going to talk about disaster preparedness, acquired disabilities, and human rights. However, first, Shane, perhaps you could start by telling me a little briefly about G3 ICT, what it does, and your role there. And then after that, we'll jump straight into a few questions that I've, I've prepared to ask you. So over to you. All right, thank you, Tom, and it's an honor to be here today. Um, G3 ICT is an uh, NGO, an international NGO, that was um, formed to support the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, principally the area of digital accessibility and rights um, for persons with disabilities throughout the world. Um, so there are a number of projects that we engage on, including um, smart cities frameworks, um, discussions on inclusive workplaces, um, universities, making them more inclusive and maturity models related to that, um, and a number of other things, including the DARE index and our work with the International Association of Accessibility Professionals. Um, so my role at G3ICT is as a senior fellow. Um, so I help with um, research related to these projects and helping to design the work that we do in support of uh, our colleagues there. Great, thank you very much indeed. So now let's um, jump straight into the issue at hand. Could you tell me a little bit about the issues around acquired disabilities resulting from either natural or man-made disasters? Yes, absolutely. Um, so acquired disabilities is a complex subject. This is due to the many scenarios that may cause a person to join the disability community. And add to that the nuances of geopolitics, climate science, global and regional economics, and longstanding societal barriers experienced by persons with disabilities. Um, it's easy to see why stakeholders may find it difficult to engage on this subject. And when we say disabilities in this context, we mean the definition used within the CRPD. So what we're proposing with this discussion is the development of resources that uniquely address the rate and diversity of acquired disabilities resulting from disasters. And these resources would aid the planning and response of governments and NGOs um, and benefit impacted individuals. Um, and this would be complementary to the work on inclusive disaster risk reduction occurring artic under Article 11 of the CRPD and the Sendai framework as represented in the efforts of the European Disability Forum, World Institute Disability and many other parties. So the first point I'd like to explore is how acquired disabilities contribute to the growing size and diversity of the global disability community. It's estimated that a quarter of disabilities worldwide result from injuries and violence. And current estimates from the UN suggest that up to 100 civilians, including women and children, are killed each day due to armed conflict. So research on acquired disabilities shows that for every person who dies during violent conflict, three more acquire significant injuries that could lead to long-term disabilities. And the number of people who die from indirect effects of conflict is three to 15 times higher than direct casualties. In a decade-long study on children in armed conflict, there were, um, the results were that two million had died and an additional four to five million acquired physical disabilities and 10 million experienced psychological trauma. With regard to natural disasters, studies estimate that over 3,000 weather disasters occur each year, with major events numbering in the hundreds. And the International Disaster Database shows that from 2,000 to 220, over 3.4 billion people were impacted by disasters in the top 10 countries reporting such statistics. Two common examples given for the need for inclusive disaster risk reduction are the 2004 tsunami in the Southern Pacific and the 2010 earthquake in Haiti. In both instances, it is equally important to consider the resulting rate of acquired disabilities. So following the 2004 tsunami, 1.7 million people became homeless and 1,500 villages were destroyed, and there was a measurable increase in the prevalence of disability in the impacted area. It's also estimated that upwards of 200,000 people acquired long-term disabilities as a result of the 2010 earthquake in Haiti. So these examples demonstrate why acquired disability is an important topic within the broader context of inclusive disaster risk reduction. Unfortunately, we do not believe that it receives nearly enough consideration. Um, so the second point I'd like to highlight is that there are real measurable economic and social consequences related to acquired disabilities. So given the data on the subject, 
we could say that each day hundreds of people worldwide may experience a sudden change in their social identity because of natural and man-made disasters. These individuals likely never considered what it would mean to be a member of the disability community. They are probably unaware of international conventions, national and local laws, and the availability of services for persons with disabilities, as well as the many systemic challenges to full inclusion that persist throughout the world. They could be in the acute phase of disaster, struggling for survival. They could be internally displaced or forced from their home countries. So depending on these circumstances, governments might not recognize these individuals as persons with disabilities because governments primarily rely on planned census activities and enrollment in public services. And if they're unable to account for and recognize these individuals as persons with disabilities, the existing challenges that these governments face with um, unemployment, with poverty, levels of educational attainment, and the digital divide will become more pervasive and could be further exacerbated by increases in the prevalence of disability within their countries, especially without prior planning or recognition for what that could mean. Thank you very much indeed. I mean, from what you just said, numbers and data are incredibly important. So how do you see data science being applied to address this issue? Because I'm sure it can help. Yeah. And, and that's something that's of great interest for G3ICT because this is central to our mission. Um, so I'm excited to share that our work on this topic propose, proposes a new resource to assist all impacted stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And the resource would be a predict, predictive analytics model that would assess the rate and diversity of acquired disabilities based on multivariate scenarios. So as proposed, the model would consider historical data on disasters and acquired disabilities, patterns and reoccurring events, and a list of key variables to be refined by experts in the field. These variables would include the type of disaster, the condition of physical infrastructure, political stability, economic health, and unique geographic considerations. And it would be worthwhile to also include data on government human rights records and the participation in international conventions, as well as the level of investment and maturity of disaster preparedness and response systems. Social variables would also include the degree to which countries recognize and support all forms of disability, including psychological trauma. So the outputs of the model would include predictions on the rate and diversity of acquired disabilities that could result from disasters and the relative economic impact to governments based on predicted outcomes, which we believe would provide a compelling reason for governments to plan for such outcomes and develop strategies to mitigate the consequences. Other outputs of the model could include indices that show comparative levels of risk between countries and regions, which would be, I think, incredibly useful for a variety of stakeholders. Great. Thank you very much indeed. I think we're not running completely out of time, but one final question, um, which would probably sum it up, is what do you propose to do about it? Yeah. Thank <laughs> Sorry you. about that. Um, I'm putting you on the spot there. Oh, no, absolutely. Um, so this model that I, I just kind of described is aspirational. It's theoretical at the moment. We are looking for partners. We are looking for other interested parties and experts in the field to, to come together with us to explore the feasibility and um, the, the, the ability to put such a model out there to support stakeholders. Many aspects of this model already exist in a disaggregated format from different areas of specialization. What we're pr proposing is to bring them together and focus them on this topic because we think this topic is very important. So next step is to invite interested parties to contact me, contact yeah. our colleagues at G3ICT for further discussion to work on this project together. Great, thank you very much. I really appreciate your time and thank you for a really interesting fireside chat. Shane, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thanks. Bye.